Previously on the Adventure Zone. The fifth grand relic, the temporal chalice, or chalice, Ah. depending on just sort of what region you're from. And as you make your way out in the street, you see smoke coming through the windows of the bank. There's a dark elf woman who is lying on the ground. She, She is dead. There is a young man with jet black hair lying on the ground. He is also dead. And there's this small hole with another bubble around it, and there's light coming down through this hole. And actually from far above you, you can faintly hear the sounds of commotion and of distant screams. You will need divine intervention. You you will find it at the Temple of Istis. All right. There is a skeleton. I would be willing to help you out, to help you seek divine intervention from Istis herself, but I will need my brother's help in order to do so. Tell him that, that Luca misses him and, and needs his help. Yeah, probably not in this loop, but... <laughs> You're about to see these boys on their baddest behavior. Lend them some sugar. They are your neighbor. It's the Adventure Zone. Let's just pick it up where we usually pick it up, where we've picked it up so so many times before. I imagine it's sort of like how when you sit on a couch for long enough, your butt impress just sort of <laughs> leaves like a little fossil in there. Um, I think you there are three like forms of just your unconscious bodies like in the dust, like you've you've worn it out in that in that one space in front of the uh, gate leading into refuge. What do you want to do? Um, I I think it's pretty obvious we need to go find his brother. Right, go right. find Luca's um, brother. Yeah, in the yeah. last episode, Luca told you that he is he works the Stone Fruit Farms, um, and yeah. that's where he is, and he's he's up to some some trouble. And that was that orchardy looking place yeah. we saw. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can see it on the map. It's like the northernmost, the farm ish place. Yeah, the place that's um, explicitly labeled Stone Fruit Farms in the in the key. Um, I, so can we assume that we just are like moving past Roswell with our? Yeah, loop? you can you can use that same loop. Uh, uh, that, that I also thing. just. As we're walking past it, would like to take a peek down the well at the start of town. Um, as you approach the well, I would like all of you to make perception checks. Oh, dunk. I had you do this last time, too, and everybody failed. Not this fucking time. I got a 12. I, yeah, no, I got an 8. That's not very good, Daddy. I know. Do so better. I guess I fucking failed. Do better. Whoa. I'll do at better. it. A lot of do swears. Do better at it. Um, Taco, how'd you do? Yeah, well, the kid has got you covered right now with this. He's got a twenty-three. Oh yeah, Jesus. Okay, no, the kid with those king king magic with those magic eyes. Um, Taco, you see from uh, f- from behind the well, kind of uh, sp- spying on you. It looks like you see the shadow of a man, Scaramouche, Scaramouche. Uh, no, you, you you do. I mean, it does. It kind of looks like a a guy's shadow, like looking at you over the well. And that, to be frank, that twenty three was like just good enough to see this thing because it was really tough to see. Uh, and it it vanishes almost as soon as 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 you lay eyes on it. But you know, you know that was that was somebody looking at you. Um, and I'll actually say, with a roll that good, um, you kind of piece together that. You've walked by this well every time you've come in town, and you've never seen that thing there before. Not in any of the other loops. Now, this shadow, Griffin, does he know what evil lurks in the hearts of men? No, there's no, there's no fedora on this, on this being. Is there, like, some kind of spiritual, emotional fedora? Everybody's wearing a spiritual fedora, Tra- Travis. That's the secret. Have you heard, have you heard the good news? That's I'd like the, to. Tell, I've got some pamphlets here about your spiritual the, fedora. That's what the book, the, the secret, is about. <laughs> is there any sort of top hat? I mean, what's the chapeau situation? Of course? <laughs> uh, no, there's Don't a, leave uh, us hanging, Griffin. Give the people what they want. There's Stetson hat. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. How about that? Nice. Um, but yeah, the shadow's gone just just as quickly as you saw it. It, it is not there anymore. Do I have a? Se- I mean, is it gone or did I stop seeing it? Do I have a sense of that? I mean, you didn't. You didn't like. You didn't like 
start no it's just gone it just okay. disappeared right in front of you well i didn't see it so i'm still headed for, to check down the well i just okay. want to kind of look down maybe drop a penny oh okay do you actually do that do I have pennies? I don't I mean, want to have, drop any like. Then you got to drop a diamond. <laughs> yeah, you got gold pieces probably, unless you spent literally all. How of them. How about I just like drop a rock down and listen? You probably have a few gold pieces just as like per diem that the bureau gives. But I don't want to drop some fucking gold pieces. That's like dropping a all dollar. Right, yeah, coin you, okay, you drop a rock. Um, and fuck, this is captivating. What no, you, will you <laughs> drop? <laughs> you you drop a rock. Well, this is this is actually going to be interesting. You drop a rock, and it's it's like. Um, you can you can kind of see down the well a ways. You hear the rock um, hit something. What sound would it make? It sounds the the sound sounds vaguely like boom. Like it doesn't sound like it's hitting rock or it doesn't sound like it's landing on anything. Unfortunately, it's it's too dark down that down that well for you to see kind of uh, wh- where, I, where it stops. Fellas, I've got a theory. I know that that's not my norm, but. Uh... Remember how we could like hear the explosion and stuff when we were down in the mine at the shield with the worm and stuff? Mm-hmm. I think this is how we could hear it. I think we're right above it right now. We could definitely investigate that, but I, I feel like the farm should still be our priority, right? Definitely, but this might be a shortcut to get down there a lot faster next Let's time. Let's remember the well. You're heading up to the stone fruit farms? Yeah. Okay. Um, how are you, are you, how are you getting up there? Cause it's a, it's like on the opposite end of the bubble than you're, than you're at. So it'll take you a fair while to get there. Just, just walking. If only we had something we could ride. D- listen, I see where you're going with this. It's not a three man. <laughs> are not? there any horses around we could hijack? Um, there's, there is a uh, one horse, uh, sort of, uh, uh, posted up in front of the sheriff's office. Um, but that's it. I mean, they don't really have need for, for horses. Okay. In this, I yell in this over world. my shoulder, Roswell, we need your horse. That's fine. I'm too big to ride that thing anyway. I hate All that. Right. I hate that fucking horse. All right. I grab Merle and drag him up behind me. Okay. <laughs> I cast Phantom Seed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Yo. Geralt, Geralt appears beautiful, shimmering mane. Maybe a look of jealousy or perhaps competition in their eyes as they, uh, as they eye this think. other horse. Yo, thanks for putting the little dwarf on him. <laughs> Wait a minute, what that's supposed to mean? Because uh, you're a fat man. I don't like it. <laughs> man, you know, Geralt always talks the truth, man. You're All right, heavy, Geralt, like, I'll follow your lead. You're like dark matter. You're so small, but it's like, yeah. Yeah, we get the, yeah I'm fat. Let's go. Yo. You're not fat. You're dense, I think is what Geralt's saying. Dense, yo. Dense you're is not dense that dwarf. much more complimentary. Yeah, you're but you're dense. Like a good steak. Made out of metal. I'm not good at metaphors. I'm only about 30 <laughs> seconds old. What's up? Let's ride. Wait, 30 seconds old. Is it a different Geralt every time? Every time Geralt is summoned and unsummoned. Sure, there's Geralt. some kind of race memory thing. He's not stringing called. together his memories. Yeah, I guess that's... Wow, shit, that's Wait, dark. Okay. And yet he remembered I was dense. What? He Here. could just tell by fucking looking at oh, me. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, you, you work your way through the... Uh, I think if of- you're a horse and you don't get a sense of how heavy it would feel for someone to ride, that's going to be like your first thing that you develop. That's 101. <laughs> that's 101. It's yeah. like, that person looks dense. <laughs> that person's dense. That person's got oats. That's 101 and 102. Okay. All right, so let's ride to the farm. Uh, okay, yeah, you ride through those those woods. It's a it's a fairly uh, easy ride. Uh, you you go past uh, Paloma's uh, uh, hut uh, and get some of that good smell. All I'll wave you. at it just in case she's looking out the window. She's not. Well, you don't know. Okay, well, actually, you probably. I guess you do, do know. Yeah. I'm in, I'm making it all up as I go. Um, and as you reach sort of the end of the woods, yell, Paloma, Paloma, uh, I'm waving at you. Um, she just yells, holler. Throughout okay. the door. Ah, Shop. so she is a hollaback girl. She absolutely is. Um, you, you make your way to the end of the woods, and uh, you, you start to come near uh, a clearing um, through which you can see stone fruit farms. Uh, and, and what you see are, uh, it's, and it's, it's fenced in with a, a small sort of picket wooden fence. Um, you see two wide plots of orchards, and they are lined with these tall, well-kept trees uh, of uh, and and each of those trees has dozens of these plump stone fruits, which are sort of plum-like, uh, super sweet 
produce that that can grow in in harsh environments like um like this this one um and these these stone fruits you've definitely eaten them before i think they're like as common as apples in this world uh but these look like incredible they are unblemished with a, a, a flawless marbled purple rind each one's about the size of a, a, a regulation bocce ball wow. um mm-hmm. and you see uh two people uh, standing in this field, you see a male elf who is gingerly harvesting some of these fruits from a tree near the center of the orchard, and you see a tall human woman uh, who isn't doing any field work. She is practicing aiming a crossbow at some bottles that are lined up on that fence. So that woman is uh, facing in your direction, but has not seen you yet because you haven't emerged from the woods. Uh, to the left of the the two plots, you see a large, um, fairly inviting-looking homestead um, but as you look at it, you notice something weird, and that is that both the fields and even a portion of this house have been cut off by the bubble. Um, and these, these fields are, are really wide, but they're not especially deep because they just end at the bubble. And based on the width of, of these plots, you kind of surmise that they were once like vast, vast orchards that have been reduced to sort of a fraction of their size when the bubble went up. Um, and, and remind me, Griffin, the bubble is opaque or translucent? Um, from r- r- it's kind of uh, it's kind of halfway. It's kind of shimmery. You could, if you looked really hard, you could see what's going on outside. Um, but uh, the yeah, gotcha. have we really ever investigated the bubble? I mean, if we ever. I mean, we went through it that one time, but I don't think we've been back to it. The memories, if memory serves. Yeah, okay. I mean, you've been. It's certainly been like around you. I mean, it's everywhere. You can see it. You look up and you can see it. Um. So, so that is the scene. Oh, and these two farm workers. I should mention, they're wearing purple kerchiefs around their necks. Oh. And they're using them occasionally to sort of dab the sweat uh, out of their eyes. Um. They're not wearing them as as bandit masks or anything like that. But they got purple kerchiefs on. Uh, so you are at sort of the end of the woods. You come to this clearing. You can see them. They have not seen you yet. What would you like to do? I have rustic hospitality, so I'm just going to go up and talk to them. You know, you've mentioned that every episode, and I don't know if we've ever taken advantage of it. Uh, okay. Yeah, you, you come up out of the woods. Do you say something to sort of announce yourself? Do you? What do you do? Now, uh, be rustic. Be rustic. Be, do be in, rustic about it. In Elven. To the to the elf, I say hi ho there, elf. It's okay. a pleasure to meet you. You you appear on from this the, fine day. You appear from the woods and yell hi ho. And as you do that, you actually startle the uh, the <laughs> the woman that was shooting the crossbow at the bottles, and she uh, lets an arrow fly in your direction. Uh-huh. Oh, let me guess who it hits. Seventeen uh, versus AC. Um, that misses. Okay. Yeah, it, and it, I've got my Fletcher's mitt, so I'd like to imagine I catch it out of the air. Okay, yeah, you catch it inches in front of your face. Uh, and uh, she panics and yells, uh, oh, oh my god, and starts to knock another arrow uh, in, in her crossbow. And I, Sorry to startle you. Uh, did not mean to at all. Uh, we, we are just here um, looking for Redmond. Um, we spoke with his brother, Luca who said that this is where we would find him. We were hoping that you might be able to point us in his direction. Uh, the elf uh, has come down from the tree that they were picking stuff from and grabs a staff from the ground and and holds it up. Uh, and um, I think both of them kind of instinctively actually pull the kerchiefs over their faces. And they uh, the elf says, uh, Did Roswell send you? Are you here to stop us? No, we, we stole this horse from him. We're not with him at all. D- Taco and Merle, what are you guys doing? I'm, I'm watching this delightful exchange. Yeah, I feel no need to to hop in here. I'm good. Okay. Uh, have then they, they say, have they seen Taco nope, yet? They, they have not seen the other two. Uh, and Magnus, they say, uh, "Are you alone?" Yep, just me. Uh, just here looking for Redman. No, okay. no big thing at all. Just uh, wanting to talk to him about fruit. Uh, the elf uh, starts. Big to fan s- of fruit. You see, the elf <laughs> start to like swirl his uh, staff around, kind of menacingly and there are some there's some sort of sparks some sort of accumulation starting at the top he's not casting anything he's just kind of trying to he's flexing a little bit uh and he says uh okay drop your weapons right now 
Uh, well, how about uh, the, the old same time maneuver? When we both put our weapons down, you've got that swirly staff, which is quite impressive. That's wonderful this, staff no, work. No, 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 what? no, no. If you want, if you want to talk to Redman, you're going to do it unarmed. Okay, you got it. Uh, just don't touch them. Uh, they are cursed and might kill you. So I put. <laughs> oh, cursed weapons! I've heard of those. Um, it happens. So I, I, I put my rail splitter and rapier on the ground. Okay. Yeah, you set those down, and you, you uh, start to walk toward them. Uh, Taco and Merle, you guys just, like, watching all this happen from the, the clearing? Just waiting for our moment. Yeah. Okay. Just waiting uh, for that. Does it seem like they're, does it seem like everybody's going to head inside? Um, or... Yeah, they, they all start to move. Uh, one of them actually comes over and frisks Magnus. Uh, looking for other weapons. I think you have a short bow too, Magnus. That they oh that yeah, you I put that down. down on the I never okay. use that shit. Yeah, uh, that yeah you're you're being like you're following orders, right? You don't have some secret plan nope. to like. Sneak I'm, a I'm being rustically hospitable. Okay, cool. Yeah, they, and they they are they seem more at ease actually around you, Magnus. Uh, they, it seems like you have gained their trust. Uh, they like my musk. Yeah, they, this is this is your rustic hospitality. I think paying off, uh, and they start to walk uh, with you back in. Taco and Merle from behind you. You hear. Uh, rustling. Um, you hear people running, actually. And when you look behind you, you see two other uh, guys wearing purple kerchiefs who you recognize as the drunk dudes who just probably just got blasted out of the bar and are running back to home base. And they see you and they yell, Hey, these we got some spies in the midst! Uh, and this makes the other two people turn around and draw weapons let's roll initiative oh i don't get a surprise round or anything um, i down. think i think they would get a surprise round on you if anything um you you are the surprised party uh by the backup that has has come to join join things i got a 13 oh sorry plus two 15 all right that was a 15 and another, another 15. 15 wow weird do you get wow, to add, I have you, a, you add you add to that right dad no, I got zero initiative. I have a fit. I, I rolled a fifteen. Oh Jesus! Did guys. you really? Yeah, oh, no. this is weird. Oh. Curse table. Uh, what's um, everybody's dex modifiers? Mine's plus two. Taco. My dex taco uh, plus plus three plus All zero. Right, so it's going to be taco Magnus then Merle. Um, and in okay. fact, taco, you go first. Uh, you got the two that are basically have weapons drawn on a disarmed Magnus. And you have the two ruffians that are uh, behind you, uh, and um, they are they are drunk and embarrassed because they just got da- DJ Jazzy Jeff out of the bar. But um, otherwise, they're they're ready for a fight. Are we still sitting on Garrel? Uh, yeah, yeah we are. I, I think you would. I, that's up to you. I think you would dismount, knowing not not knowing what's going to happen in the situation as you uh, emerged out of the clearing. But it's up to you. Are you on? Are you on I the, think we the being, spectral horse? Uh, I think we're probably dismounted. Ah, okay. yeah. I just don't want to integrate him into a fight. I don't. I don't know. I was how trying to work it. in some really dope rodeo stunts. If you that did want awesome. to integrate, if you want to integrate him into a fight, I think go for it. It sounds like it'd be hysterical, but. Um, yeah, yeah Dad, you. if you want to ride him, you can. You're still on him. I hopped off. Okay. Because I need no, to No, no, that base. was on my horse, which I'm calling oh, Horsey. That's right. right. Um, what's Horsey's deal? Um, horse? If Dad's still on him, Dad's still on him. I'm still on Horsey. Okay. okay. It's time for dope rodeo shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to cast on the the ma- magical one, Uh. Odaluke's resilient sphere. You're just you're just making shit. You're just scat manning over there. Making Let me see the card. Up. Let me see the card. Odaluke's. Oh no, he's not. Sphere. Okay. A sphere of shimmering force encloses a creature or object of large size or smaller within range. An unwilling creature must make a dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, the creature is enclosed for the duration, which is a minute. That's a six. So, so he's not. just he's just floating around in a bubble now. Nothing, not physical objects, energy, or other spell effects can pass through the barrier, in or out. Though okay. he can breathe. He can, I'll let him breathe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like, I like the, the mental image of him, uh, the, the bubble maybe floating around a little bit, like a literal like soap bubble. Um, and, mm-hmm. and this elf is now just kind of uh, helplessly flying around. And some of those sparks that were like coming off the staff are now bouncing off the, the interior of the bubble, and he, he shuts that spell down. He's, he's, he looks kind of scared. Yeah, kinda be careful. You don't want to burn off all your oxygen there, bubble boy. 
Uh, Magnus, you are up next. You are yes. disarmed. You are like right next to these two, or I guess next to this one now, uh, who had a, a crossbow trained on you. Um, and the other one is floating around in a bubble now. You're about 10 feet from your weapons. Okay, I'm going to use uh, my cunning action Okay, to use dash, and you gain extra movement for the current turn. The increase equals your speed, blah, blah, blah. With the speed of 60, for sure. example, you, you just can get move. Extra, you just get extra move. I got you. Yeah. Um, to head for, you know, my weapons. Okay. Um, and um, the, the three of you were walking into the house when you, you... You weren't inside of it yet, but that was the direction you were heading. I just wanted and, to... And I was in front of them? Um, they probably... You were probably side by side. Okay. Um, because... Uh, it, but with the cunning action, they don't get an opportunity to attack, right? I, I... Yes. Or maybe that's disengaged. No, that's disengaged. So they are going to get an opportunity attack if you run away from them. Actually, hold on. We're side by side? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Before I go, I want to just punch one of them. Well, there's only one left that's not in a bubble. Okay, yeah, I want to punch her. Okay. Oh, you bubbled one of the two that were near Travis. I bubbled the wizard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I was worried that he would be the one who could cause the biggest damage. Wow. Okay. Oh, you choice. You, you're phantom fisting, I imagine. Phantom fisting. Yeah, sure. All right. Go ahead, go ahead and roll. I rolled a fourteen plus eight twenty two. Yeah, that works. Uh, so that's not very much damage. Nope, but I get to push her away from me. Okay. Uh, yeah, I only did one plus four, so I did five, and I can push her back, so then I can run. Okay, get my you, weapons. you phantom fist punch uh, the, the one with the crossbow, uh, and she goes flying backwards and actually hits the front door to the house, which causes uh, quite a ruckus, and she comes, she sort of slumps down uh, under the, uh, right, right on the doormat, the welcome doormat into the house. Okay, uh, I run and grab my weapons. Okay. And then I use my second move action to charge right back at the door, because I have a feeling there's going to be a bunch of people coming out. Okay. Uh, Merle, you're up next. Uh, okay. How far am I from the, the two guys, that the two drunks? Uh, they, they got right up on you. I think, I think they're probably like five feet away. Okay. I am going to uh, charge one of them with horsey. Okay. I'm going to do that... Uh, that really cool, um, that uh, like a little bighorn move and hang off the side of the saddle, <laughs> you okay. know. And I'm going to take the arc like spanner and uh, clobber one of the two purple guys. So, are you charging one and clobbering the other? No, I think I'll charge the one and clobber the one. Okay. Okay. Uh, the one on the make, right. Go ahead and make the an one attack on the right. roll. Okay. Um, it's a d20. Four. Okay. Uh, I think you... I mean, you definitely miss. Wait, wait. I, don't I add to it? Yeah, but there's... You're not gonna... You there's no gonna, way. You ain't clearing this AC, bud. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. You hang off the side of the horse with this wrench and uh, uh, bring it down uh, and, and try to try to clobber them. Try, try to, like, polo them as you go, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I don't think, I, I, I think you fail spectacularly, uh, and I think oh. make a, uh, make a dexterity saving throw for me. All right. S- seven. You, you definitely. I'm, I'm falling off the horse. Yeah, you aren't definitely I? fell yeah, off the horse. Of, and the yeah. horse goes running Did he off fall the off the horse or did he do that thing where he like turns all the way around so he's like hanging upside down oh, and on then the horse. My head's bouncing against the ground. <laughs> No, yeah, that that happens, and you hit your head on a tree trunk, and then you fall off the horse. Uh, and right, the horse runs so out of time. Uh, the ruffians are up next. Um, the crossbow one is gonna uh, just sort of stand up and start banging on the door, saying, uh, uh, "We got trouble. We got trouble. Roswell found out. We got trouble. Get out of here." Uh, and the two ruffians are going to. Uh, I think they're both going to wail on Merle. Uh, who is sort of laying at their feet right now. Uh, And I think because you're prone, you have... They have advantage on the attack. Sure. So this is going to be not Nobody's trying to get their friend out of the bubble. Seems like that's what I would do. I'd try to get my buddy out of the bubble. No, Uh, they're pretty... Let them wait on me. Yeah, they're not really near the bubble buddy. Um, Yeah, but I'd try to get over there. I mean, they're not going to get closer. (laughs) Well, the first one... like somebody. The first one, the best roll they got was a 14, which I don't think is going to beat Tracy. Okay. Second one crits. Oof. Ouch. Oh, wait. That's the wrong dice. Oh, 
Oh, man. Uh, 29 damage. Jamie, uh, Christmas. They, they have a big shit. old hammer, and they just bring it right down uh, on your tummy. Uh, and wow. uh, you cough up some stuff, and it's gross. Pew. Uh, back to the top of the order. Um, actually, before before anything else happens, the door, uh, Magnus, that you have positioned yourselves in, uh, in in front of, um, the door opens up. You have your weapons, right? Yep. Yeah. The door opens up, and the only thing you see is a guy, and uh, he's dressed in sort of fairly humble farmer's clothing. He's got a, a big bushy brown beard. Um. He looks, he looks kind of soft, for lack of a better term. Uh, although, although he's a he's a bigger he's a bigger dude, uh, kind of kind of an imposing frame. Um, and he yells with a booming voice, uh, "Everybody, calm down! Put your weapons down! There's there's no need for us to fight over this." Uh, and and uh, the the people the the people these these farmers and the drunk. People from behind you, they all drop their weapon. Bubble Boy also drops his staff, and it's just kind of floating around in the bubble with him. Uh, and as you say his name, Redmond, he says, uh, oh, I see my reputation precedes me. And he kind of laughs. Your brother Luca sent us? You you met Luca? Yeah. Sort of. Well, <laughs> sort of. It's you, he might as well, He's lost a lot of weight. We met most of him, yeah. You, the skeleton... Yes, I'm. Yeah, I know. yeah I'm. Oh, I, I, okay. Yeah, I know all about it. Um, Wasn't sure if you guys had kept in touch. Re skeleton. You might. You might as well come inside my little my little wood nymphs. He yells to the woods towards towards everybody in the woods woods party, uh, and uh, the the two drunk guys kind of sulk in. Oh, such a, it's a big mistake. It's gonna these guys are gonna ruin everything, and yep. they they sort of slump inside. I kick the bubble as I'm going in. Yeah, the bubble guy's like trying to hamster hamster wheel his way inside, uh, and uh, and and everybody uh, retreats inside. And uh, Redman motions you in. He's like, "You may as well come inside. I've got a stew going." Oh, um, the bubble moved uh, half of his movement range. By the way, when I kicked it, so <laughs> in case you're uh, curious how far it went, it looked awesome. I kicked it like uh, 15 feet. Okay, okay. Uh, he says, "Would you would you mind unbubbling my friend there? He's." He actually just wait. Kind of, it's not a, big, a good smell. He's kind of claustrophobic, and uh, oh, I can't wait. imagine. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh uh, yeah, the bubble pops, and he falls to the ground. And he hits his butt. <laughs> Dad did a great bubble sound effect. Can we just get isolate that? For yeah, it's just isolate. Give it, give it to me one Dad, more time. Let's get, get that one more, more time. Isolated for one post? more time. All right. <laughs> great. That's good. That's great. <laughs> We'll plug that in there and a couple other places. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, you you made your way inside, uh, and this is like this is a fairly humble little home, but it's like very cozy. Uh, and you see pictures of Redmond uh, with his arm around uh, a, a slightly smaller, almost identical person uh, who, uh, it's actually clean shaven, but you can, you can tell this, this is Redmond's brother. This is what Luca looked like in life. They're both wearing robes, um, with the sigil of Istis. There's, there's some, uh, of the, like, there's like, there's like a banner of Istis hanging up on the wall, but there's not like a lot of it. Uh, there's, there's, there's not a lot of stuff. Um, there's an office with like a bunch of, uh, plots sort of laid out, uh, like designs for how the orchard would be laid out. Um, but you are all in the kitchen now, which has one interesting feature, and that is that like a corner of it is just gone. It's just bubble. You could like reach over to the side of the kitchen and touch the bubble, which Redman actually rec- recommends that you don't. Uh, and Redman has served you all up and the the four ruffians in his sort of party uh, some stew. And Redman says, uh, "Okay, now it's time to tell the truth, boys. What are you doing here?" I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Um- uh, so let me see. I think we need Istis's help, according to Paloma. You know that that witch lady in the oh, woods. Oh, I love Paloma. Have you tried her scones yet? Uh, I've heard they're great. I have not had them tacos. They were off the chain. Yeah. Um. And so we went to the temple, only to find it demolished. Yeah, that happened. Uh, yeah, you probably know. Um. And then we found your skeleton bro mm. in a cave. And cool, he said he said he could probably like get us Istis's help, but he needed your help to do that. I mean, 
the two of us could maybe raise the temple if Istis um, wants that. I mean, it's kind of a long shot. It, it, it would only be raised if she deems it. So she's not really one to interfere in our machinations. But I, I could certainly, hmm, I, I could certainly I'm pretty help sure, out. I'm pretty sure she'd be on board because I think time and fate has kind of been fucked Oh, it's with. all goofed up, yeah. Yeah, um, it's yeah. real messed up. The problem yeah. is... If it helps, we have a member of our party who's very strong in faith. And he may be able to help with this with this endeavor. He's a very faithful man, very powerful with gods and what have you. And he I'm literally really, has a hand of God. I'm willing to convert no, wait, to no, is, wait. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Nope. You Voice. don't sound like that. Oh. And I am willing to convert to Isthmusism. I got fucking swept away for a second there. Did you guys feel that? <laughs> I did. Yeah. yeah, I felt it too. Um wow, that you're so quick to abandon I think actually when you say that, um <laughs> Oh when you God, actually yeah, when you say, say that, Merle, deeply religious, but like will flip <laughs> he will his drop his god. <laughs> when you say that, Merle, your pinky falls off of the wood hand, and it lands in your stew. Bloop. It like it just withered up and died. Or I could stay with Pan, <laughs> and it grows. It grows back. Yeah, it, it grows yeah. back. It grows back, but it's a little bit smaller than it just was. <laughs> Um, I bet it says, makes the stew taste like shit. He says, um, Redmond says, I'm I'm willing to help, but you all have sort of come here at arguably the most inopportune time. There is something in motion that I'm going to need help with. Yep, that sounds about right. Yeah. Me and my party here have one interest, and that is to burst the bubble and escape from town. They started calling us the Liberation Brigade, which I think is kind of goofy, and everybody else at the table is like, "Ah," he's like, I, "I, I, mean, I get it. Like, you want to have some, some, some intrigue and stuff. I, I, I just branding, wanna, yeah, yeah, some branding. It, yeah. I, I just want to get out of here. Um, and I have this. This is going to sound silly. I follow the whims of of fate. That is sort of my creed. It always has been. And I know my gut is telling me that the way out of town is, is in the vault." in in the the bank of refuge got it and i'm i'm going to retrieve it with or without you but the fact that lady is just brought you here to me today tells me th- i'm on the right path and you all can help me get in that vault so you you help me get in that vault and me and luca will will will, will, will try to raise the temple up for you i i swear it let's reverse that and i think we've got a plan I I listen. Unfortunately, things are hmm, the plans are already kind of underway. We actually uh, need to mm-hmm. get going basically right now. Um, I, I'm going to shoot straight with you here, Redmond. Um, we're in a bit of a loop about an hour, and midway through, we've done this a couple times. You robbing that there old bank, uh, everything is going to go to shit. What are you talking about? Uh, well, there's a thing under the town, and it's going to rip everything, just a new one, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Make um, a, uh, make a, I want you to make a roll for this. Make a, um, what's it called, where you try to convince somebody? Persuasion. persuasion. Yeah, make a, make a persuasion roll. I think that's the only way to do this. And... That is a, well, it's a 12 plus a 1. That's not going to do it. That's a 13. No, I, I don't think this line of reasoning is going to get in there. Um, he says, uh, I don't... <laughs> I, I appreciate what you're saying, but we, what you're telling me goes against what my faith is telling me, so I, I hope you understand that we, we got to go ahead with this. I you, mean, I we were that. the ones sent here by your, your god or whatever, yep. but and that's the, cool. And yeah. I appreciate all the help. Um, so you help me rob this bank. It'll take five minutes. I know you're in a hurry. It's, it's a foolproof plan. It's going to go great. What do you say? Hell yeah. It's a caper. Yeah, fuck it. What's the plan? Hey everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your dungeon master, and your best friend, and your weatherman. Looks like it's cloudy with a chance of meatballs. I love that movie. I have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. Thanks for listening to episode 46 of The Adventure Zone. It's like the 5th or 6th, or maybe even the 7th episode of the 11th Hour arc. Um, we're getting kind of close to the end of it, uh, and some some stuff goes down. Not going to spoil it, but prepare for some stuff. 
hey, I want to tell you all about Blue Apron because Blue Apron is wonderful and means a lot to me, and it's a cool thing that you should be doing. For less than 10 bucks a meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients uh, that you can use to make delicious home-cooked meals. I literally just made one tonight. It was like a Korean chicken noodle dish that was out of control. Uh, they have really exciting recipes that they, they send you, and they're, they're always different. You can get stuff like spiced pork burgers with goat cheese and cucumber corn salad, a summer vegetable and quinoa bowl with fairy tale eggplants, shishito peppers, and corn. Uh, chicken tinga tacos with summer squash and tomato salsa. It's all super great, and it teaches you how to cook. Uh, and pretty much all of them can be made in 40 minutes or less. Um, it's it's so, so great. I really recommend it. It is I, I adore it. I subscribe to it. I pay for it. They don't like to send me free food, although that would be tight as hell, Blue Apron. Um, you can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping if you just go to blueapron.com slash adventure. That's blueapron.com slash adventure. Blue Apron, well, that's a better way to cook. Also want to tell you about NatureBox. NatureBox, you probably heard about it. They've been a friend of the family for a long time. They've they sponsored all of our, our podcasts here at McElroy Industries. If you're trying to eat better but you, you think nutrition labels are confusing or boring, Nature Box is going to help you out. They're going to give you the snack that you crave that you didn't even know exist. They're like a matchmaker for flavors and your mouth. You go to the grocery store, you're like, let me look around. What is this? Is This chip says it's made out of vegetables. That's crazy. Don't you get confused by pretenders like that. Just go to Nature Box and get your hands on some bags of tasty-ass snacks. Talking about snacks like vanilla bean wa- wafers, like cashew crumble, like whole wheat strawberry figgy bars, like peanut butter nom-noms, like mini Belgian waffles and lemon tea biscuits. So many good snacks, you're going to absolutely go just gaga for them. You're going to lose your mind. Just go to naturebox.com slash adventure. Right now, you'll get two bags of delicious snacks without any of the junk for free. That's naturebox.com slash adventure. Get your two free bags of bold and unique snacks delivered right to you. Naturebox.com slash adventure. Get them two bags of snacks for free. Got a personal message here. If you want to get a message on the show, uh, just go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron and uh, find out how to do it. It's it's easy, and we have some availabilities here at the Adventure Zone Industries. I don't know why everything has to be a small business this week, but here we are. This message is for Shannon Dapper. It's from Killian, who says, I wanted to be the first at the Bureau of Balance to wish you happy birthday. I think you're incredible. You're strong, smart, funny, and have great taste in characters. I hope you have a great year. And when it's hard, remember, I got your back. BTW, Taco made you some fried chicken macarons. I hope you get them, but Fantasy Post can be screwy, so he might owe you one. Not exactly sure how a fried chicken macaron would... It seems like... It seems like the grease would sort of disrupt the natural chemical processes that form the macaron. Although if anybody could make it work, it would certainly be taco. Got another message here. This one's for Anthony Amato, and it's from Nicole Klein, who says, Anthony, since the first day we met playing D&D, I knew I wanted you in my life. These five years have flown by. You do more than make me happy. You make me realize I deserve happiness. I adore our life together and want to be with you forever. So hopefully Griffin will give me a sec to get down on one knee to ask... Anthony, will you marry me? Holy shit! I didn't... Sorry, I'm interrupting your moment. Go, do your thing. Okay, this is the part where I admit that I didn't read this message, like, start to finish, before I just kind of jumped right into it. And I guess that's the right way to do it, because I would have I would have stumbled all over myself if I knew that this was going to be a wedding proposal. I'm sorry, I just got so nervous. This is the first one of these we've had on the show. Uh, I hope it went well. It's it's um is this is a very uh, profound magical moment and thanks for letting me be a part of it and thank you thank you for listening and I hope I hope the love is good. Hate to move on from from such a nice moment into more advertisements, but got to feed the beast. I want to thank everybody for tweeting about the show using the the Zonecast hashtag. If you do that, you might end up as a character in the show. Talking about characters like Luca, Purple MFTW on Twitter, uh, Ren, Ren Fraley on Twitter, like Redmond, Chris Fromlet on Twitter. Uh, if you want to end up as a character on the show, just use the, the Zonecast hashtag uh, and, and you might uh, end up doing it. There's, like I said, probably just a couple more episodes left in this arc, uh, but then we're going to be moving on to a new one with new characters and new availabilities for names. But not only that, we just like really appreciate you spreading the word about the show. We don't pay to advertise it at all, so word of mouth is the only way that we get new listeners. Um, so if you have a friend that you think would be into the show, uh, tell, tell them about it. Send them a link. That burn them a, a flash drive or something. Don't burn a flash drive. Burn a CD. Don't burn flash drives. That's probably bad for the environment.
if you enjoy the show, check out MaximumFun.org and just, just click on some podcasts and go listen to them. We are so proud to be a part of this network. It is such a cool thing. And there's so many good shows like The Flop House and Jordan Jesse Go and Baby Geniuses and Can I Pet Your Dog and Stop Podcasting Yourself. Uh, all of these shows and Throwing Shade. Uh, all these shows are so great. All free at MaximumFun.org. Uh, if you want to hear us do more shows, just go to McElroyShows.com and you can find all the podcasts we do like Schmanners, a show Travis uh, does with his wife Teresa uh, about manners you can find sawbones a show that uh, uh, Justin does with his wife Sydney about medical history you can check out Rose Buddies a podcast I do with my wife Rachel about the Bachelor franchise uh, or Cool Games Inc a video game podcast I do with Nick Robinson at Polygon uh, you can find all the shows we do, so many, all at McElroyShows.com. And I just want to mention one last time, uh, we have created an expansion pack for the card game Monikers. Uh, it's a party game that is so, so, so great. Look it up. I, I, I We've gone too long here. I don't want to go into full details, but it's, it's one of my favorite party games. Um, and uh, I, I just know that you would love it. We've made an expansion pack uh, that is all just sort of like jokes and references and characters uh, for, for all of our podcasts. It's mostly My Brother, My Brother and Me, but there's also some Adventure Zone stuff in there as well. We're about to close pre-orders on that very, very, very soon, like tomorrow, I think. Uh, and once we do that, you won't be able to get it because we have no plans right now to sell it as like a, a, a product. We're only doing pre-orders. So so if it sounds interesting, just go to McElroyCollection.com. Check it out. Uh, it's just 10 bucks to, to pre-order the expansion pack. Uh, I, I, I think you'll really dig it. That is it for this commercial break. Uh, the next episode will be up on August 25th. So we'll talk to you then. Bye. He tells you, he's like, Blitz, I'll explain on the way, but we really do need to get going. Um, and uh, leads you out of the house, and you start to go back through the woods uh, towards the town. He says, uh, the, the plan is, is really simple. Um, we're we're going to uh, blow the vault. First, we're going to get everybody out of the bank. There shouldn't be that many folks there. Um, but I'm not we're sure gonna, you do that. We're going to get everybody out of the vault. Uh, we're going to get everybody out of the bank. We're going to place... He uh, he has a small sort of uh, lockbox on him, and he pops these two latches in it and opens it up. And uh, in, in, encased inside, uh, sort of in uh, like a little styrofoam little um, divot, is uh, it looks like a single cluster of the cluster bombs that you saw earlier, only it's uh, pitch black and it's buzzing. Um, and half of it is actually transparent glass and you can see inside and some kind of combustion has already started inside of this bomb. It's about the size of a tennis ball. Um, he says, we're going to use this and it's going to blow the shit out of the vault door. We're going to get inside and f- hopefully find whatever we need to pop the bubble. What do you guys now, say? Ditto. Remind me the, the couple of times that we've been in the bank after they've tried this, the vault door was not open, correct? The vault door was closed. It was unscathed. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. I think you're underestimating that their vault. Mm, well, uh, I mean, it's a pretty good bomb, and I feel very good. Listen, there's a lot of things about this plan that are a bit hinky. The bomb ain't one of them. Look at that thing. Well, I mean, you say that. Uh, uh, you reach. Okay, listen, can I tell you something right now? Yeah. You saw the bubble I made earlier? Uh-huh. I'm like, pretty cool. You understand that, right? Yeah. What if I told you you could get in the vault without the use of any explosives whatsoever? Walk in, walk out. Um, okay. Uh, I that does sound enticing. Make a persuasion roll. Fourteen plus. Okay, fourteen. That's no. That's still not good enough. Is there any way to assist? Yeah. What do you say? Like, what do you say is <laughs> true? I've seen him do it. Um, I don't think you could, I because you've already failed like almost this uh, exact same persuasion roll. But Merle, if you wanted to try to like hype hype him up, I would give. I'm I would try it. Yeah. If you want to like attest for his magical prowess. Yeah. Maybe. Fourteen plus five persuasion. Hey, listen. He knows what he's talking about. He's he's pre med. I'd listen to him if I were you. I'm intrigued by you, and Lady Isis obviously wants you to be involved with this caper for some reason. And he closes the he closes the what? lockbox and snatches the snaps the the latches. What's, and he's, he, what's he drinking? What's my boy drinking? He's not drinking anything. What are you talking about? Or I thought we are, we had all sat down to. No, you're on your way. You're on your way to the. You've left the house. You're like on your way to the bank now. Okay, I'll pour him a glass of water from my water skin. Okay. 
Okay. He says, you want to see, you want, you want proof that I know what I'm doing? He says, Check this out. He says, yes, this, is, I, this is not the most opportunity. I'm like walking and you just handed me a glass of water, but sure. Yeah, But, sure, but take, it's so hot and it's, thirsty. It's, it's hot, huh? Would you love a chill one? And then I, I point my ring of frost at it and it has the ability to make beverages frosty. I say, give that a whirl. <laughs> he sips it and he goes, yeah, that's a very cool beverage. Uh, you are the quid sets I knew it. You were the chosen one. Listen, I'll, yeah. I'll, my, make, I'll make this plan B. My alarm is like so strong. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I drink anything cold. It's not even a thing. He Rams taps, and steel, baby. He taps the box and he says, I'll make this plan B um, for bomb. It's a sta- That's how I file things away. Um, but you, you, you get in there. Uh, time is going to be sort of of the essence of this heist. Sure, my way's quicker. So, um, and safer. You, you. I'll give you guys two minutes, and we'll hang out. We'll we'll hang out sort of towards the towards the outskirts. We'll hide. Um, and and you go in, and we'll we'll give you we'll give you one hundred twenty seconds to get in there, do your thing, do your magic thing, and then if if it, you guys get in trouble and it doesn't work out, we'll come in and you help us just sort of crowd control, and we'll do it. We'll do it our way. Does that sound fair? What are you getting out of the vault? Is it just money? I don't know what's in there. I just know what it is. Is going to help us pop the bubble. I know it. Cool. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. I want to make it clear, like, that's not just, like, um, a shitty MacGuffin. Like, I think the, the him and his brother's, like, faith in, in fate is, like, they've been following their guts their whole life. So their their intuition is their religion. I'm sold on it, baby. Okay. You don't got to sell me. Uh, okay, so yeah, you come to... Uh, it, all of you are sort of by the elder's manor, and you're kind of creeping uh, behind the, the fence that is uh, surrounding it. Um, and uh, they send the three of you out first, and as you start to approach the bank, you see Roswell standing in front of it, because that's where you told Roswell to fucking be. I know. Roswell's standing there, and they are patrolling the bank. And they say, how's everything going? Have, have, you, are, have you figured out how to stop the, the disaster? Yeah. I, I, we need to get everyone out of the bank. I have a cunning plan. I can't share it with you now because I don't know who we can trust on your team. But we need to get like, everybody out team. of the bank. It's just me. What are you talking about? I'm not going to empty the bank out. But- there's, a, there's a mole. <laughs> A literal a great big giant mole. There's a mole. Okay, yep, like you said, it's a mole. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make the bank empty out. I don't. I still don't know you guys from Adam. I just trust that you have some sort of otherworldly knowledge. You might use that knowledge to rob this fucking bank. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna empty it out. Hey, uh, can I ask you a question? Are you Anderson Cooper? Well, I don't even know who are, that is. Are you Ahmad Rashad? I have no idea no, who that is either. Then you do not know the identity of the mole. <laughs> I, what I'm telling you is there, there is a mole, okay? And we don't know who we can trust. But we know we can trust you. You're on board with whatever we need. Am I right? N- no, abs- absolutely not. What um, if I let you hold on to my fish as collateral? I don't think Roswell's going to empty the bank out for you because that would be crazy. It would also make this heist not very exciting. Well, we got 120 seconds. Okay, we're we're just gonna put our we heads. The, are we on the timer right now? Uh, no, not yet. They probably wouldn't start it until you go inside. Um, but are you are you gonna just let Roswell kick it there while you rob the bank? Or we're not gonna attack Roswell, Dad. Maybe you don't remember, but he was like skull level. Yeah, to Ros- us? Roswell will yeah, fuck you he up. He cons really hide us. Um, okay, go get go get Lucas. Is that the name? No, Lucas. No, wrong arc, bud. Who's the name of uh, what's the name Mark, of the elder? It's Mark Lucas, <laughs> <laughs> um, Sheriff Isaac. Go find Sheriff Isaac. We'll post up here. Okay. Right. Have, when you guys get back, we'll tell you everything you need to know. I haven't seen him yeah. today, but I'll go wait in the, sh- in the in the office for him. Great. Okay. Uh, we'll 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 instigate our plan. We'll start at twelve oh five. Okay. Uh, Roswell clambers off uh, to the sheriff's office, and uh, now the bank is unprotected by Roswell. <laughs> you boys ready to do this? Can I be George Clooney in this? Always. Or, okay. Whew. I thought you were going to make me Casey Affleck. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, you going inside? Yep. I kick open the door. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> That's unobtrusive. Unnecessary. Yeah, you, you kick the door open, and one of the guards goes, Hey, this is a nice door. Come on. <laughs> Fuck your door. Okay. You're kind of rude. Um, this, this is your first... Are you all going inside? Like, what's your... Are you Got formulating it. any kind of plan before you do this, or are you just going to fucking improvise? 
That doesn't really go along with the whole character I've built. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Uh, okay, well then, this is this is your first time all being inside this bank unexploded, um, and uh, you notice a few things. First of all, it's the nicest building you've been to in Refuge. It's it's uh, very very well kept, very nice interior. Uh, there's a couple of potted plants in front of a long wooded desk with a sort of glass partition um, uh, protecting uh, Brogdon, who you see behind it, sort of counting counting out some diamonds and putting them in a till. Um, there is that heavy metal vault door uh, right behind them, uh, and that that vault door looks as imposing as it, it uh, ever has because it's never really been affected. It's nine feet in diameter, all unrelenting black iron. Um, you can see that there's a huge combination lock dial towards the center of the vault door, uh, and that is flanked on three of its sides with what looks like small metal hatches. That is the the makeup of the vault door. There's a glass dome on the ceiling that doesn't appear to be a light fixture. It's just kind of hanging into the room. It's about two feet in diameter. Um, And there are two large, heavily armored guards flanking the desks. Each of them are wearing pole arms. And um, their whole loadout is basically identical to Roswell's. Um, like it's, it's the same armor. It's the same equipment. And it's probably what Roswell was like outfitted with. Um, and, uh, yeah, you see, you see Roz, you see, uh, Brogdon behind the desk wearing a, she's wearing a pair of small glasses. Uh, she's going over some spreadsheets and, and she says, uh, can I, can I help you? Please don't kick any more pieces of furniture. Okay. <laughs> uh, the, I point at one guard and look at the other one and I say, by the order of Sheriff Isaac, guard, arrest that man. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, he's, and the, 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 are you pointing at the one? Are you accusing the one that complained when you kicked yes. the door in? Okay. He says, what did I do? He's been working with the bandits to try to tear this town apart from the inside out. The other guard looks at the one you're accusing. And he says, uh, Jerry, have you been have you been working <laughs> with the bandits? And Jerry says, no, man. I, did, I didn't. I don't even know any of the bandits what you're talking about. I, I whisper, Taco, get moving. <laughs> Uh, what's their what's their like visibility on me currently? I mean, you all said you walked in, so yep, I did walk good, in. It is good. It's good visibility. Okay, okay, they got they got four eyes full of taco. Okay, uh, I put my hands on my head and I say, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I this is terrible of me. I'm sorry." Uh, and I uh, I'll, I'll I surrender and I lay down on the ground while they continue talking. <laughs> What is going on with this? This robbery? man is an informant with with the bandits. He's told us everything, Jerry. I, I You're gonna like have to come with me. There's enough shit in the bank that they that I'm I'm imagining there's stuff between us and them that they lose visibility on me if I lay down on the ground. I don't understand. Like they okay? Isn't there like so? so you said there's like desks and stuff, right? Um. Yeah, you if, like you're, if you're if you're if you're hiding behind something, that's fine. But if you're just laying down on the ground, you don't turn invisible. I, well, I don't turn invisible yet, my dude. Uh, saying, okay, like, yeah, I, they stop. They stop seeing me. There's one I'm of like, those. There's one of those. There's one of those desks that you can like fill out a deposit form on. Uh, if you yeah. if you want, you can hide behind that. Yes. Okay. I'm behind the desk. You can just arrest me whenever you want. Uh I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, what, Merle? Uh, were you doing anything to help in this? Yeah. This charade? Yes, I am. I have a spell called Command. I speak a one-word command to a creature I can see within range. Okay. Target has to succeed on a wisdom saving throw. And I want to cast this on the guard that's not Jerry. Um, You know, I'm looking at this spell now. You know there's only like six things you can make them do. What are the six things? Uh, You can make them approach you. You can make them drop whatever they're holding. You can make them flee. You can make them grovel. You can make them halt. And then there's... Got it. Yeah. Got it. Um, yeah, they did not save. Uh, what are you Flee! Gonna the- okay. So you're Wait, making... Give a- it with a character voice. Okay. Flee! This is important. Which one are you using it on? You mm. on Jerry. Nah, I said the one that wasn't Jerry. <laughs> okay. 
um, then the one that Magnus was trying to get to arrest the other one. No, no, wait. Suddenly just fucking runs out. No, I, we got to go with this because it's too okay. good. It's too good that the plan okay. has been this bad so far. Uh, the <laughs> one that was going to arrest the other one or you were trying to get to arrest the other one just runs out of the room. <laughs> oh, wait, you were Jerry? Sorry, I meant him. Uh, wait, uh, wait you see- okay, uh, okay, I... um. As soon as he takes off, I pop a piece of Mockingbird gum and make my voice sound like uh, Roswell's. Okay, Jerry, he he's the he's the real criminal. Jerry, go after him. You got you got to get him quick. I'll be right in. Um, uh, I want to paint a picture. Brogdon at this point is uh, stands up from the seat she was sitting on at the desk, and she is looking very very nervous right now. Uh, as Jerry says, uh. I trust in you, Greg! And he fucking bolts uh, out of the building after the person that you just commanded to run away. As that happens, they... Um, fuck yes, okay. Uh, as that happens, uh, the they as they run out of the room, they brush past two people who have walked into the bank. Um, and these two people, uh, one of them is a dark-haired man, um... And he's carrying like a, a, a the drawer from a cash register uh, that is just heaped with diamonds. And you haven't seen this guy before, just because you haven't gone to the place where they are. Uh, but the last time you you saw them was dead on the floor of this bank. And the other and another person comes in, also carrying a register drawer full of diamonds. That's Ren. And oh. uh, as you see Ren walk into the bank, you piece together that. Every time you've been in here, there's been a dead dark elf woman on the floor. Uh, and she comes in uh, as the two guards are running away. Uh, and I think the dark haired guy actually gets spooked as two guards come fleeing from the bank. Uh, he goes running out of the building. Rin doesn't. Rin just drops her till full of diamonds, which kind of scatter everywhere. And she sees you, Taco, uh, underneath the desk and yells, Oh my God, Taco, what are you doing here? Desk inspection. <laughs> Ren, do you trust me? I I trust that you're an excellent chef. Holy shit. She's like, come down to like kneel and be like, can I can I have an autograph or something? Absolutely. Meet me outside right now. <laughs> um, that dark haired guy that went bolting out of the building, you hear him yelling for Roswell. Right. Okay. Hold on. What time is it? What time is it? It's 1145. Shit. Listen, consequences don't matter. We need to move. Hey, listen, Ren, I'm wicked sorry about this. I cast banishment on her. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, she rolls to save? Yeah, charisma. Charisma check? Uh, that's a 19. Shit. She does. She is not banished, but she knows that you cast some sort of harmful spell. And no, she actually, it's not a harmful spell. No, it's not. No, 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 no. Banishment is not a harmful spell. No, no. And but she she knows you tried to. I mean, if you knew I was somebody just to cast save a spell, you. shit's about to break. She back like here. she scurries backwards on her hands and knees, and like that's fine. Tears. She's got tears <laughs> in her eyes. Yeah. And she stands up and bolts from from the from the bank. Well, that, she looked well, really that really fucking upset. works too. Whatever. Yeah, that works. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Ren. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, then I just fucking walk over. To when the that happened, ball, when like, that, yes. one other thing happened, when you cast, the second you cast that spell from your position underneath the desk, you hear the sound of breaking glass, and the dome above you uh, uh, had shattered, and you hear a thump, and sticking out of the desk looks like a dart that is dripping with something. But because you're underneath the desk, it didn't hit you, it landed. Uh, it it it, it uh, connected with the it connected with the desk, and the the dart didn't hit you. But you can see now that the glass dome around it has broken. There is uh, what looks like a small turret uh, hanging from the ceiling. And at this point, um, I'm going to pop it off. Brogden uh, reaches down under her desk, and you hear a click, and her desk starts to change. Uh, I, I grab Taco. Okay, we got to move. What are you? What are you? What are you doing? Because we could get into some shit, or you could try to stop this action. Uh, let me let me describe it. Uh, and as she as she hits this button, uh, a metal uh, gate that is like the width of the room starts to drop down from the ceiling, 
uh, and it is going to cover up basically the her half of the room uh, and and sort of separate all of you from her. It, like not a metal gate, like a like bars, like jail cell bars start to drop down uh, from the ceiling. But I'll give I'm, you time to make a reaction to this. But you got to do it. Is the vault on the other side of those bars? Uh, yeah, it's on the it's it's on the other side. They're um, lowering down. Yeah. 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 I'm Indiana Jonesing under that shit. Okay, Taco Merle. What is this do you a do? roll? Uh, I mean, describe what you're describe what you're gonna do. Scoot under the bars. We got to get to the vault. Okay, Taco is Brogdon doing something? Uh, she's just hit a button under the the uh, under her desk, and I mean that is what she did, and that is what started this uh, gate lowering from the ceiling. Uh, the desk. There are panels on the front of the desk that have started to rotate, uh, but you can't really see what the desk is transforming into because we're like in bullet time right now. Okay. Um. Yeah. I. I. I'll he- get under the the fence as well, or under the gate as well. Okay. All of you are gonna me- need to make some dexterity ass saving throws. Okay. Okay. Like athletics. And and these are going to be. Uh. I mean, if you can think of a skill, if you wanted to like describe how you're using the skill, I think it could be dexterity. I think it could be athletics. Would probably be fine. I think acrobatics would be fine. I'm going to throw taco. It is more important for him to get there than me. Okay. Um, then I'm gonna. I'll, I'll just give Taco advantage on whatever he tries to do as he fastball specials you, Taco. Yeah. Okay. Do I have time to cast a spell? Yeah. If you also want to assist in Taco getting through, I am going to cast Enhance Ability on Taco, Cat's Grace. Okay. Which which increases his uh, dexterity. Okay. I got a By twenty-one strength check. Okay, you throw Taco. And by how much, Dad? I don't know. Uh, I should say on there how much it, it increases it by. It says see page 237. <laughs> All right, what's the name? Wait, hold on. I, I got the player's handbook up. What's the name of the spell? Enhance ability. Oh, this is going to uh, be fucking great. I have advantage on dexterity checks. Uh, I, okay, I have advantage on dexterity checks. Well, so you get double advantage. Okay. All right, cool. You have double advantage. You have super advantage. Uh, okay. why, don't, why don't you just roll your... Are you doing acrobatics? I'm doing an acrobatics check, yes. Okay, here's what you're going to try to do. I'll describe what what how this would be resolved with an acrobatics check with your permission. I think you Magnus has just thrown you and I think you are going to try and contort your body so that you go through <laughs> like the hole in the teller's window that like <laughs> diamonds and stuff would be passed through. Like cuz I think that would be like the only opening that would make sense. And also okay. it'd be amazing. Okay, great. <laughs> That's an 18 plus 3 21. Yeah, you you make your body into basically a spear, and you go perfectly through that window. And in doing so, I think you just knock Brogdon right out. Uh, you you just go through the window, thrown with a tremendous force and in like enhanced in the air by Merle, uh, and and you make your way through at just as the gate uh, chunks to the ground, uh, sort of separating you from Magnus and Merle. Uh- I land perfectly and throw my arms up in the air and shout, Taco gets the gold! <laughs> Yo, Taco gets the gold. Uh, Merle, we need to resolve this. Make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, 17. Okay. You dodge just barely out of the way as you cast that enhancement spell on, on Taco, and a dart um, plugs into the ground uh, at your feet, fired from that turret above. Chunk. Oh, yeah, I'm. I'm just for future reference. I'm gonna just hold my shield over my head and as much over Merle's head as I can. Okay. Um, I don't because got you care what the kids call the magics. Uh, and Taco, before I think you start your assault on this vault door, um, you all hear ka-chunk, 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 and barreling through the door to the bank, uh, pol- Polax uh, halberd in hand. Uh, Roswell appears uh, and says, uh, "In the back of my mind, I always knew it. I, I knew it. I knew I you know guys how had to know good. Looks. No, it's it's initiative time. Cool. Okay, well that's not bad. I got a nineteen. I got a five. But wait, and an eighteen. Seventeen for me. Nineteen for Magnus. What was yours, Dad? Eighteen." 17 for Taco. Yeah. Uh, Merle, what's your dex again? My dexterity. It's a zero dexterity modifier. 
All right, Roswell got the same thing. Um, Magnus, you are up first. You have that turret above you. Oh, and by the way, uh, uh, no, I think the desk would stop its transformation. That Brogdon fight could have gone very bad, but but I think you nullified it. Uh, so you have that turret above you. She was, yeah, She. I don't want to tell you what was going to happen, but uh, you got the turret above you, you got Roswell in front of you, and Roswell's ready to just fuck you up. Uh yeah, and Taco is through the gate, and you have Merle at your side. Merle, by the way, you're still damaged from the fight earlier. Wait yeah. a minute, I ate magic stew! Yeah, that no, I, did, I don't think it was magic stew. Uh, what are you doing, Magnus? Magic stew is my favorite character we've created so far. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> hey, it's He's me. like Magic Brian. Anybody want to see some prestidigitation? <laughs> it's me, Magic Stew. Um, <laughs> by the way, it's been longer than two minutes now. Um... And I think seeing Roswell run into the place, uh, the 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 other robbers are kind of hanging back to see if you can take care of them first. Okay, I'm going to charge at Roswell. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. Okay, uh, go ahead and make make them rolls. Two handed. Well, one handed because I'm holding my shield up. One handed uh, rail splitter. Okay, sixteen plus. 925? Oh, yeah. Cool. And I'm going to use Disarming Strike, and then that's D. I get to roll to save that, right? I think so, yeah. Side note, I've been fucking around with Roll20 lately. I don't know if you guys know anything about it, but it is an online app that you can do all of your rolls in, save all of your character data in, visualize things with maps and tokens, uh, and get descriptions on every like spell in this game and every other role-playing game basically ever. It's very fucking cool, and I think we should give it some serious thought using it. It's, like, super lightweight and free. Um, I've, I've been messing around with it, and it's it's pretty um, cool. So it says that you have to make a strength saving throw, but doesn't say what you have to hit. How do we figure that out? What's your strength modifier? My strength modifier is... It's whatever. It's 8 plus the relevant stat. Cool. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I save. Shit. Is, is his strength, like, real good? Yep. Yeah, I thought that might be the case. Okay. Are you, atta- you attacking again? Well, I'm going to do damage first. Okay, so that's 7 plus 2. It's 9. Okay. I'm going to attack again. Okay. Okay, it's 17 plus 9. Yes. 26. Yes. And I'm going to hit him with Goading Strike. Okay. Purity Dice, 5 plus damage. They have to attack you now, right? Oh, yeah, they have to attack me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And then... Plus seven, plus five. So 12, 17 damage, uh, and 17 is what he has to beat for a wisdom saving throw to avoid it. Uh, no, they do not save. Cool. Uh, you done? Yep. Okay, Roswell's going to take two swings at you. Yep. Uh, the lowest one is a 20? I mean, yes. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Fifty-six damage okay, altogether. Well, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I'm gonna use Perry. Okay. <laughs> hey, it's me, Perry. I see you're getting killed. <laughs> How can I help? <laughs> oh, you know what? Actually, huh? I should have used my cunning action. Is it too late to do that? Yeah. Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the definition of cunning is you forget to. <laughs> I have a cunning plan. <laughs> well, I uh, had one. So it's reduced by nine. So okay. So. Uh, 47. 47 damage. I am instantly bloody. <laughs> yeah. Um, next in the order is uh, Merle. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast. I'm going to mass cure wounds on Magnus. Okay. On On Magnus. Okay. And that's a 3d8 plus my spell casting ability. It says mass. Is that like area of effect? It can be uh, up to six creatures. So how about myself and Magnus? Because Taco is not hurt at all, right? No, okay, good. cool. So it's 3d8. What And my spell casting ability modifier, which I don't know what that is. It's eight. Uh, it's eight. Okay. So 3d8 plus eight. Uh-huh. So that's three. Eight. Three, so that's 14, 14 plus 
Eight. Eight. So that's we're both healed for twenty two, correct? Yes. Yes. Well, that was good. Of yeah, me. that might that might keep me from dying on the next run. Yeah, some of some of Magnus's when when uh, when Roswell just like cut you like slash an X across your chest, and you had like you could see like pools of blood starting to come out of Magnus, and uh, Magnus's wounds close up somewhat. Uh, next thing is that the first time I've ever healed anybody? <laughs> no, it's but it, it's been a while. Uh, Taco, what are you doing? I'm going to use the hole thrower on the vault. <gasps> okay. Uh, yeah, go for it. It is a six foot hole, so I fucking assume I'm um that's through the door, right? The metal is five feet deep, so just barely. Perfect. You got through it. I had hole thrower in mind, and I kind of wanted to make it a a fifty fifty. Um, so so yeah, you create a six foot hole. Uh, it's six foot wide, six foot deep. Um, and uh, you you it just sort of opens up before you. Um, and you can see into the vault. Here's my question: when I uh, when I look into the vault, yeah, are there any gems in there? There's so many fucking gems. Here's that this will be the temptation of Taco, um, because there are uh, quite a few gems on the ground. Uh, there's big boxes, big wooden boxes um, with a sign that say "to be filed," um, and the boxes are full of diamonds. It's like shimmering, bright, beautiful, bright in here. There's also the only sort of thing of interest in the room, um, other than these beautiful, expensive-ass-looking diamonds, uh, you see a pedestal almost perfectly in the center of the room. And I think just for dramatic effect, there's a single overhead light shining down on it. Um, <laughs> and this journal says Isaac on the, on the side of it. Um, uh, that, is, that is what you see into the vault. You haven't moved yet, so you can still move. I um I run into the vault and grab uh I, I could scoop something up as part of my move, right? Not an action. I think like, now that we're this deep into the podcast you can. Okay. <laughs> I scoop up a handful of the most expensive looking gems I can find. Fucking fantastic. Wonderful. Okay. You scoop up some wonderful, beautiful diamonds. Merle and Magnus, I think you can see what's going on in this room at this point. Taco! What the fuck? <laughs> hey, listen, guys. Trust me for once. Okay. Anything we can do to help? Stay alive and stay out of my way. We'll um, fucking see. Okay. We can do uh, the second one easy. Tall All right. order. All right, Magnus, you're up. All right. Um, I'm going to disarm, atta- attempt disarming strike again on him. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Attack. Uh, 14 plus 9, 23. Yeah, that's a hit. Strength check. I have to beat a 16. Yes, okay, yep. Uh, no, I don't, I do not beat it. Fuck, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Roswell's, uh, halberd goes spinning out of their hands, uh, and, uh, I think actually back out through the door outside, uh, and you hear it stick into the, the, the ground out there. Um, you doing something else? You do another attack? Actually, you know what? Because this is like an attack on uh, your enemy's hands, that's like what the description actually literally says. When you do that, you don't just get rid of the the halberd. You knock off their gauntlet that was sort of giving form. And now you can just see like the living red clay that that, uh, was inside that gauntlet uh, forming kind of a a, a round end to to, to Roswell's arm. Got it. Got it. You doing something else? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> is is there any fire anywhere nearby? Yeah, sure. There's two torches hanging by the wall. Okay. I'm going to dash. Okay. And I'm going to grab that torch and move back. You're defo going to take an opportunity attack. Okay. Okay. I, I, I said one thing to stay alive. <laughs> Literally one request. Uh, Don't die. That's going to hit. Um, What is it? 21. Yeah, that hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Roswell, just using that clay arm, just punches you in the ribs as you go past. Um, but it's, I mean, it's still a very powerful strike, uh, and it hits you for 11 damage. Okay, I can take that. Okay. And you grab this torch, and what are you doing? And I'm gonna move back, and I'm gonna attack his hand with the torch. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, you, you, I don't even think you, you need to roll for this. You just jab this torch into, uh, the, the clay hand. Uh, and I mean, it, it's not, this isn't, Roswell's not made out of gasoline, they're made out of clay, but you do see 
uh, sort of, you do sort of see that arm kind of stop animating so much, and you hear Roswell scream, um, and that that I'm arm, really really sorry. I'm really really sorry. And that arm kind of becomes hard. Yeah, you guys are are getting deep in the paint with some beloved characters right now. And uh, I'm gonna action surge. Uh oh. And I'm gonna just... chop that arm. Oh Jesus! You love this shit. It's I'm your so you're sorry. a fucking pervert. Fetish, exposing everybody, your fetishes. So sorry, 16 plus, uh, plus 9 is a 25. Yeah, I don't, yeah, it just shatters. That arm shatters. Um, I'm so and, sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Yeah, go ahead and roll damage. Okay, so that's a 7 plus, well, I didn't hit him with the disarming strike. I didn't do damage with that. Right. So that's 16 points of damage for that. And then I okay. rolled a seven plus five, so it's twenty-eight points of damage altogether. Okay. Um, do I get? Do I roll damage for the torch attack, or is that just the arm? That's just the arm, I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, Roswell is up next, um, and they are just kind of holding where their arm was. Um, and is my action sir, just an extra action or an extra turn? I can't like run away or anything, can I? No, you took. No. Okay. Um. Roswell is going to they just kind of point like the their the remainder of their shoulder of the arm that you just removed and a a, a fount of red clay uh is going to basically try to encase you um and and hold you down um so that would be uh 21 Jesus 21 city over here is that the a- is that against my AC? Yeah, yeah. I mean that hits. Yeah. So Roswell just sort of in retaliation just kind of uh, uh, forces some animates some of its its red clay body. You actually see that after this attack they kind of slump down a little bit in their armor. Their armor doesn't fit as well anymore because they use some of their body in this attack. Um, but a big heavy blob of red clay uh, hits you uh, and you you fall to the ground and you're basically kind of. Um, uh, you are you are incapacitated, um, but it does. I don't think it would do any damage. Um, Merle, you're up next. What time is it? Um, you intuit that it's about eleven forty nine. Okay, I, I'm uh, I'm going to cast a spell on on Roswell. Okay, don't it, cast a spell. The turret. Obviously. No, 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 no! You definitely can't say that you're under clay. Oh, okay. I thought maybe I could breathe. No, that's uh, all right. No, that's going to be something we're going to have to deal with. Uh, oh. go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Merle. Obviously, he has to be powered by magic, right? Um, yeah, they are powered by a very, very, very powerful magic that you don't quite understand yet. So, if I were to cast dispel magic, uh, yeah, you could give it a try on Roswell. This will be cool. This is, this is a great idea. Go for it. Um, I, I don't think there's any... You don't have to roll or do anything. You just cast Dispel Magic. Uh, di- like, dispelling the spell that causes Earth Elementals to, like, move around. Because I, I think both you and Taco are familiar with the concept of of how Elementals and Familiars and stuff work. Like, animating inanimate objects to make them do your bidding. Um, although you've certainly never met one with as much personality as Roswell. So when you cast this at Roswell, Roswell kind of contracts in their armor and, and shrinks back and recoils at the spell. Um, and they stop moving for just a couple of seconds. And then it's almost like the spell just reactivates. It, it, and, and it's not like any magic you've ever seen before. And again, this sounds like DM bullshit, but it's, it's, there's some there's something keeping Roswell alive. There's something that makes Roswell Roswell that this that your dispel magic spell for some reason doesn't dispel. Because Roswell's an elemental, right? Yeah. yeah. Um okay. Taco, it we're and trust me, I'm not gonna let that go too unresolved, depending on what Taco does on this next turn. Yeah, I got it. Don't worry. I uh slowly walk out of the vault. I grab the journal on the way up. Okay. So, for what I'm going to do, I had to get these really powerful gems. Uh, they have to be worth at least a thousand gold pieces in order for me to cast this. Oh, fuck. My name is Taco, and you work for me now. And I cast Planar Binding. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's that do? 
With this spell, you attempt to bind a celestial, an elemental, a fey, or a fiend to your service. The creature must be within range of the entire casting of the spell. At the completion of the casting, the target must make a charisma uh, saving throw. On a failed save, it is bound to serve you for the duration. Okay. Oh, God. If the this creature is gonna be... summoned or created by another spell, that spell's duration is extended to match the duration of the spell. Okay. Fuck, this is going to be good. Okay. Uh, do I have to make a roll? Do I s- roll to save? Uh, charisma. Charisma saving. Well, that, okay. Uh, 12. It's not going to do it. Um, okay. Here's how this is going to pan out. Because this scene is about to change pretty dramatically, and also we need to start tying it up. Have you ever seen Akira? The movie, yes. The movie Akira? Uh-huh. Yeah. You know at the end where the boy turns into the big blob monster who's being yes. just... As you cast this spell, Taco... You feel something wrong. You feel you feel like you're um, trying to command and control that magic that I just described to to Merle that you don't quite understand, and it's it's almost like a computer error. Like two two things are running simultaneously that should not be running simultaneously, um, and this conflict causes something happen to this the the very spell that gives Roswell life that is horrifying. Because the armor just goes flying off of Roswell, and you just see this like straight up clay face shape, uh, and the clay just expands and like like shoots out of where their arms are uh, and their legs are and their head is, and it's just flooding this this room like it's pouring out of the the building, uh, and it's just flooding this room with clay, and it's starting to like. Uh, Magnus, I think it's for you. It's just like all over you now because you were already kind of laying down on the ground. Yeah, Merle, sorry. it had already broken pretty bad for me. Merle, it pushed you uh, uh, up against the wall. Um, Taco, I think you're you 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 are a little bit less affected by it, um, and uh, it'd be because you were a bit a, a little bit further away. But it's definitely like st- it's creeping through the bars, and I think the you feel like something knock the book out of your hands, and the pages start to move it. And you you feel sort of a divine force, almost like Istis's hand is sort of like guiding you once again with with the hand of fate to look at at this journal that you have recovered, despite the fact that you are standing in the fucking danger zone. Okay, so I look at the journal. Okay, um, I do that. The, you you open up Isaac's journal at sort of the behest of fate. Um, and it is open to the next to final entry in the journal. And this will, this will be the last thing that we do here. The entry is Isaac and, um, who you have not met yet, although you start to sort of understand what kind of a person Isaac is as you read this journal entry. Do you want me to read it or you want me to send it to you so you can read it? Uh, I, it seems, it seems like it would be weird for me to read it out loud, (laughs) but I guess I probably, what? I can, I'll read it. Um, Isaac's next to last entry in Isaac's journal reads, my daddy was a safety inspector for mines operating all throughout the Northern counties of the sword coast. And as you might imagine, that made for a very cautious upbringing for myself and my kin. Every bit of wisdom my old man passed on to me dealt with how to avoid the dangers of the world outside our cottage's doors, how to evade bandits and ward off hungry beasts in the wilds and how to prevent accidental hazards in the home, stuff like that. But nothing prepared me for today. Nothing prepared me for that fucking cup. Uh, and I I, th- I just want to paint the picture of you, like, reading this as Clay is, like, climbing up your legs and, and waist. Um, you continue reading. From the moment I saw it, I knew there was nothing I wouldn't do to get that cup. I just didn't know why. I trusted myself to resist that temptation, to, to put it back toward the back of my mind, to focus at the on the hard work of bringing this diamond mine back to life. And today I faltered just for a moment and I ruined three lives in the process. I killed Jack. That's my first time thinking that thought, not protecting myself from the awful truth of what I've done. We were looking for June in the mines together. She's want to get lost in the mines, and I could just tell he had it on him. That, that cup had a tight grip on my guts. I could feel it through a six-foot-thick lead wall, and I did it as quickly as I could, as cowardly as I could. I pushed him over the edge of Shaft B, and he fell. As he fell, he turned to face me, and he shouted his last word. It was a spell that he flung in my direction. And in that moment, just after dooming him, I prayed it was some kind of killing curse. But he missed. It flew over my head as he sank into the black below. 
and when I looked behind me, I saw my prize, the cup I had killed my very best friend for, in June's hands. She grabbed it right where he dropped it, only by perfect irony, she was frozen in place right there by a barrier that I just cannot penetrate, shielded by a power that I craved enough to kill for. There's nothing I can do to get her out of that state. I tried it all. And there's nothing I can do for refuge, now that she's trapped us all in here, too. I deserve damnation for what I've done. Refuge doesn't. That's the next to last entry. And as the the clay is, like, almost completely overtaken you, you read the final entry, which says, I figured out what that spell was. Jack's last spell. He conjured an earth elemental, a, a guardian, to protect June, protect all the refuge in his absence. I met it just on the outskirts of town. Refuge deserves a better guardian than myself, that's for sure. So I equipped them with some gear, gave them a name, Roswell, for my dad, and set them on patrol using the summoning spells command word. And that word might be the hardest thing to stomach. It was Jack's dying wish, his hopes for a safer life for his daughter in his home, manifest into a single word, his final word, his final thought. Um, So you read this final word um, just as the clay is about to overtake your head. June bug. And just as quickly as this monstrosity had sort of exploded and enveloped everything in this room, the clay contracts and is pulled back in to, to Roswell's sort of base form. And you see them standing there. And Roswell says, what would you like me to do? MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. I'm Allegra Ringo. And I'm Renee Colbert. And we host a podcast called Can I Pet Your Dog? Renee, can I tell you about a dog I met this week? I wish that you would. In turn, though, can I tell you about a dog hero? May I tell you about a dog breed in a segment I like to call Mutt Minute? (laughs) I would love that. Could we maybe talk about some dog tech? Could we have some cool guests on, like Lin-Manuel Miranda, Nicole Byer, and Ann Wheaton? I mean... Yeah, absolutely. I'm in. You're on board. What do you say we uh, we do all of this and put it into a podcast? Yeah, okay. You think? <laughs> all right. Uh, should we call it like I don't know? Can I pet your dog? Sure. All right. Uh, what do you What do you say we put it on every Tuesday on Maximum Fun or on iTunes? Sounds, Sounds good to me. <laughs> Meeting's over. Attention, you're up. This fall, Maximum Fun is bringing a bunch of your favorite podcasters to London. Catch Judge John Hodgman, International Waters, and Bullseye all recording live episodes at the London Podcast Festival. We'll have fan meetups and we'll be joined on stage by a glittering array of celebrity guests. The London Podcast Festival runs September 22nd through 26th, and you can buy your tickets right now. Just go to MaximumFun.org. <laughs> 